Hello, hello. Wow, we got a nice crowd in here tonight already. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Hello. There you guys are. Hello. So today is going to be, uh, it's been a while. It's been a minute since I saw you guys. Today we're going to do something that's going to be a difficult lesson. It's gonna, this is a tough one. This is a, this is a real tough one. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's the easiest of the lessons. It's the easiest ones. I'm going to point and you're going to see it very clearly. But it hurts because it hurts to surrender, doesn't it? Who's got that white flag? It sucks, right? No one wants to surrender, right? It's like quitting. I'm not a quitter. You a quitter? Who's a quitter? But you're going to find that you've got to quit. Whatever your scheme is, whatever little thing that you're working on that's going to bring happiness to you, to bring that peace to you, whatever, whatever that little thing is that you've been working on, this is going to be the thing. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. It just isn't going to happen. But there's freedom in that. As much as that that just let you down just now, that, that sort of, oh, God. It's going to give you the peace in that surrender. That, that surrender right there, that letting go, is going to be the relief that you're going to build a whole new foundation on, an entirely new foundation. So I thought that would be what we would talk about today. You guys ready? You want to get into this? All right, awesome. Here we go. And I'm back. You guys are awesome. Let me know if the music is too loud, because I always try to keep it... Uh, so you can hear what I'm saying. Some people have a hard time hearing what I'm saying. Boy, look at everybody tonight. We've got a nice crowd in here tonight. Some new people. We have Aram in the house. Highness, what's up? Susie Q, you're back again. Love you guys. Joel's in the house. Cosmic. Onion is in the house. Wondered Soul Healer. Man, we've got a whole bunch of people in here. This is awesome. This is, boy, you might think this is starting to catch on, huh? You guys are into this. Well, thank you guys very, very much for showing up and hanging out with me. I love that very, very much. Well, you guys ready to get dirty tonight? You guys ready to get really, really dirty and dig into this whole thing here? You guys ready to dig in and hear all the things that you don't want to hear? All that stuff that you're just like, man, that is not what I wanted to hear. Because my thing is going to work. Whatever that thing is, I'm going to work. It's going to work. It's going to make me happy. That thing is. Nope. You have to completely let it go. You have to completely surrender. Completely. And it's a difficult thing to do. It's a, it's a terrible thing to do. Because deep down, none of us are quitters, right? That's we've been raised that way, right? I'm not, you're not a quitter. It's your dream. When it comes to our dreams, we're not quitters. I mean, that's, if, if there's anything to not be a quitter on, definitely don't be a quitter on your dream, right? But... The, the illusion is is that ego can do something that the illusion is that ego can do something in the dream that is going to attract something in the future that is going to bring you the vibration and feeling that you need to have to embody peace and fulfillment do you see the trap in it can you see the trap in what you're doing with your dreams now here's the relief, here's the relief in it. Different dreams are gonna come true for you. Dreams you can't even imagine are gonna come true for you. And they're gonna be more fulfilling than anything you possibly imagine that your dream is gonna be for somebody. And that's just the truth. That's just the way it's gonna happen. And there's no skipping this lesson. This is a painful, painful lesson that there's no skipping. And it's hard. It's hard. A lot of people will call this the dark night of the soul. Because it's the, it's the point where you just, you know, you ever been working at something and you just put all this effort into it and then you just get to a point where you're just like, I'm done. I'm just, I'm done. I'm done. I can't, I can't, whatever it is I'm doing, I can't do it anymore, right? Whether it's a relationship or whether you're helping your friend move or whether you're running and seeing how far you can run 
or biking or whatever your thing is, whatever, maybe it's a yoga position, you know, um, but there's could be this limit where you give up, right? You're just so, you're just so completely spent. That right there is the vibration you're going for. Remember, everything is a vibration. How you vibrate is what you're attracting into your life. So if you're vibrating at trying to get this thing in the future, do you feel the frustration in that? There's just a little bit of frustration, right? That frustration extrapolates. It, if it's a fractal out to everything else. And what does frustration, that vibration do, a frustration? It attracts more things that are make you frustrated. Can you see the hopelessness in it? It's hopeless. Well, that doesn't sound very spiritual, does it? Everything's hopeful. Hope is a very slippery slope, as you're going to find out. We can hold dreams that we'd like to see for ourselves. But all of these dreams are attachments. And the, the Buddha spoke very, very frequently on attachment. Attachment was the core of his ideology, that it's our attachments to the things in this world, our inability to let them go is what prevents us from being in fully present into the here and now. At some place in your consciousness, the dream is something that you're anchored to. You're still holding on to it. And you have to let go of it. You can't fall into this, this weightless place of not knowing until you let go of that place. You have to let go of that thing, whatever that thing is. Whether it's your dreams, whether it's your schemes, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whatever it is. I'm not saying, no, let me preface all this. I'm not saying go quit your job. I'm not saying quit your relationship. I'm not saying walk away from these things. That would be very irresponsible. These are This is karma that you've created for yourself, and now you've got to let the karma unfold. But what you want to do is quit the idea of being saved from something on the outside. That's what you have to quit. There's nothing out there that is going to bring you the thing that you're looking for. Nothing. There are temporary patches, temporary little things that help you get over these little emotional valleys, but they, they don't last. They can't last because the world out there is a world of death. It's a world of temporariness. Everything's temporary. That's just its nature. What is eternal is the present moment. It's where you are eternal. And if you're eternal, in every way, eternally satiated, then what else is there to do? Except fully, fully allow and receive. But that is a very, very difficult thing for most people. And it's one of the hardest things that I've gone through in life. And you're, you're going to find that th that a lot of these lessons come in big hurdles. It'd be like this one big giant leap you got to take. And then there'll be these little echo, echoing versions of that that will keep appearing as the karma dissipates. But this one big jump is the jump that you're going to have to take. It's going to be that that moment, like I'm describing earlier, where you're exhausted and you're done, that point of being done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm completely done. I have no more left to give. I'm completely empty of any energy to put towards this anymore. Now, feel into the relief of that, that it's over. Feel into the relief. It's over. You can stop. 
You could stop. You've done enough. You've done enough. Yes, happy 1111, everybody. Can you guys feel the relief? Can you feel that? That? It's okay. It's totally okay to quit. It's totally okay to let that dream go. Now there's probably a voice in you somewhere. It's going, so you can't surrender. Surrender's for pussies. You can't surrender. Right? This is all a trap to get you to surrender everything. It's a trap of the devil. <laughs> it's not that. It's not to be lazy. It's just to let go of the idea of this one thing. And we all have that one thing. We all have it. You know what it is. It's going to be different for every single one of you. Maybe you want to be a singer or a rapper, and that's going to save you. Maybe um, if you just scratch enough lottery tickets, that's going to save you. Or maybe if you just got that raise or that promotion or that new job or that better relationship. Whatever you're scheming, whatever the ego is trying to dial in in the world out here, the world of illusion, you got to let it go. And see, I quit. I quit. See, I quit with, try, try saying I quit with a big smile on your face and see if you can do it. I quit. You've done enough. We're all very proud of you. We're all proud of you. We're all very, very proud of you. Take a break. And use this energy instead to go inside. Go inside your mind. Dive inside of your heart. Cry. There'll be a lot of tears over this, I promise you. Lots of tears. But just make up your mind that you're done. And tell the universe, say, I quit. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Show me. Show me what the hell this is I'm supposed to see. Because I'm not trying anymore. That's when it shows up. That's when it shows up. And you know the expression, let go and let God? It's so true. It's very, very, very true. You let go, and it goes on automatic pilot for you. And it will probably go a different direction. It'll probably make a left turn that you're not even seeing, and it's gonna devastate you. You're gonna be like, what? We're doing what? How is this happening? It'll feel like it's coming from outside of your control. And just hang tight. Just hang tight. Just trust. Have faith. Let go. Your only job at that point, as you're crashing, right? And this is why it's scary. This is, the, this is why we dread this. This is the lesson we all dread. You are going to crash, okay? You can't have a rising phoenix without a devastating crash, all right? And the reason why is because there are very, very important lessons to learn at this place where you've lost it all. You're going to find that where you've lost it all is where you're strongest. It's where all of your power is. All of it. All of the power is in that place of rock bottom. Because you've got nothing left to lose. You don't care what anybody thinks. And you're just done. You're just done. And you're completely open. You're completely in allowance to receive. You weren't open to receive before. You know why? Because the ego's going, no, no, I got it. I got it. I don't want your help. You know, um, Atlas, um, he had a stroke like a, a year ago and lost his ability to walk. And man, talk about devastating. It was very, very bad here because uh, our thing is going on for walk. We go for walks in nature and it's our thing. And uh, 
he wasn't able to do that. Like he could barely walk across the floor. It was very, very, very scary for a minute. And um, as he got better, we got into rehabilitation. He's doing much, much better now. But as he was going through rehabilitation, he tries to jump on the bed and sometimes he can't make it, which is crazy because when he was healthy, he could jump an eight foot fence. So to jump on a little bed is nothing, but uh, sometimes he can't make it and I have to get up and help him, but he gets so angry. He gets so angry at me for helping him. He doesn't want my help. That's what your ego's doing. I don't want your help, God. I don't want it. I don't want any of your help. I don't want your help, spirit. And that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing unconsciously with your vibration. You have to quit. You gotta completely quit. I quit. Make a dance out of it. I quit. I quit. I quit. I quit. Find the joy in it. Find the peace in it. No one is coming to save you. Nobody. You have to save yourself. And when you make that decision, when you fully make that decision, that is when the realization happens and you will laugh yourself silly every single night. It won't come to you quickly. There will be, a, like I said, there'll be a rough patch that you're going through. It's a devastating crash. <clears throat> and a lot of people will call this the dark night of the soul, which is a very, very beautiful, beautiful read. I believe it's St. John of the Cross. Is that who wrote that, I believe? I'm pretty sure. St. John of the Cross. It's called The Dark Night of a Soul of the Soul. Just Google it, you'll find it. It's a free read. But it, you'll find it very, very, very comforting. Very comforting as you go through this. But this lesson is very, very, very important. Um there is, if you have pride, this is the this is the thing that's going to extinguish that pride so quickly. And it's very, very much like a humiliation ritual. It's, there's a lot of humiliation in it. That's your pride, that's your pride burning up, burning away from you, alchemizing out of you. This is one of the many things that has to burn away from you. This is the purification of your being. It's the refinement of who you are by burning away these fake aspects of yourself that no longer serve you. It's gonna be hard But this is part of the path. Completely part of the path, you yeah. know? Hang on a second. Wow, look at everybody in here. We got, this is a really amazing crowd. You guys are awesome. If you guys have any questions, just put it in all capital letters for me. And at the end of the thing, I'll go ahead and read through them and answer them for you to the best of my ability. You're awesome. This is not exactly inspiring, is it? It can't all be inspiring. But I want you to try this. I want you to see what I'm talking about. Most of you won't have the guts to do this right now. You might have to hear this message quite a few times. That's okay. It took me hearing this message loud and clear way too many times. I was very stubborn, very, very stubborn. I'm an Aries, so, you know, I'm not a quitter at all. So that lesson was very, very difficult. Very difficult. There's a realization that will happen when you hit the rock bottom. There's many realizations. But among them are going to be the realization that you never really truly knew what it is that you wanted. 
And this is that place where you're going to get in touch with that within yourself. What do I really want out of life that isn't part of the scheming? Because the scheming, oftentimes, are ideas that are planted there by other people. They seem reasonable to you when you hear them. You're like, huh, okay, that sounds like a pretty good scheme to get me what I want. That could be the scheme that, that could be the scheme that works, right? But that scheme has nothing to do with who you are or what you're meant to do or who you're meant to be. And odds are you don't even know who you're meant to be or what you even love. All of that is discovered in this place of completely not giving a shit. In that place, in that dark night, that's where you realize who you are. You realize how strong you really are. You realize how nobody really matters at all that's judging you, who cares? Let them judge, let them judge. Now you have responsibilities. If you created responsibilities for yourself, like children and family and things like that, that's karma. You're gonna have to let that dissipate. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to find ways to work with that. There are some things that you can't let go that you, if, because if you do let them go, you're gonna create more, com, more negative karma for yourself. So you gotta take what I'm saying here and, and find the way to apply it for you. It's not necessarily gonna apply to everything that you're thinking about. So just be very cognizant of that and don't let the ego trick you. But this is a path of self-discovery. This is a path to find out who you are, what it is that you love, what it is that you really dream about. Because spirit wants you to be that. This is the reason we're all different. Spirit doesn't want a whole bunch of dinner rolls doing the same thing. That's not, that doesn't serve anyone. It doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve God diversity, being unique, being you, your unique, unique expression of life. And however you do that, be that, do that. You might be like, well, I don't know how I'm going to make a living doing that. I don't know how I'm going to provide for that doing that. I don't know how I'm going to eat doing that. Have faith. Now, this doesn't mean be irresponsible. Again, it can't be like, you can't just dive off the cliff and quit your job and be like, all right, I'm surrendering. God save me. It doesn't work that way. You can do that. Maybe God will save you. But it might be a long time for that happens. Because remember I talked about before with Law of Attraction. The greater the the requests, I should say, the greater the thing that you're going for, the greater amount of complexity that may have to have, may have to um, follow through in order to attract this thing into your life. Now, it could be something simple. It could be the smallest little adjustment that attracts this enormous thing. That, that can happen too. But generally, the, the bigger dreams require enormous amount of complexity to make to, for changes to happen. This is why it takes a long time to attract things to you that are the bigger things. And this is why attracting the smaller things don't require so much. There's not nearly as much complexity to bring these smaller dreams to you. It's the same thing with this. So you, you got to be responsible with it. You know, spirituality is a, requires a tremendous responsibility of you to work your way through this, to navigate your way through this. Part of surrender is realizing how important it is to keep your mood up. If you jump off the cliff and surrender, I mean this metaphorically, I don't mean it literally, but when you jump off to surrender, you can lose yourself very, very easily in depression and sadness and feeling sorry for yourself. That's the test. That's the test. How bad do you want to be aware? Do you want this or not? Do you want to keep on with life as it is? Because you can play this game forever. The life as it is, the way it is that you, as it is that you've experiencing right now, 
this life can go on for as long as you want to play this game. It's a game of hide and go seek. How long do you want to keep this secret from yourself? There's no judgment. I Play. Have fun. Have fun. But if you want this, if, if it's the peace that you're after, it's, if it's the unconditional love that you're after, if it's the compassion and the forgiveness that you're after, well, it comes at a price. And that price is responsibility. Enlightenment is not about reacting to situations. It's about responding to things, responding to situations. It's a key difference. Using your mind to work through problems, but recognizing that your schemes that you currently have aren't the answer. No matter what they are, it's not the answer. It's not the answer. And you might be like, well, Ford, I'm so close. I mean, it's just like, it's like right there. That's how you know, because it'll, it'll hold you at that place of this close forever. I used to make a joke with people. I said, if one day when I'm dead, I'm going to, I'm going to my gravestone. It's going to be like this. Missed it by that much. <laughs> That's the torture. That's the illusion. It's always this far away. It's that close. Always. It's the trick. It's the, you got something on your shirt. Wait, wait, you got something on your shirt. <laughs> so you jump off and you're surrendering to life. You're surrendering to what is. Now your job of responsibility is protecting yourself, protecting your emotional state. Because like I said, it's going to be very, very easy to fall into depression and you're a dark night of the soul. Why are you doing this, right? You're going to curse God. I promise you, you will curse God just as Jesus did. Why did you forsake me? Why? Why did you leave me here dying on this cross? Why? Why am I suffering? For what? For what? You're suffering for your highest good. If anybody has children or pets or something, you might you know what I'm talking about, right? It it, it kills you to, to to raise your voice at your at your loved ones or, or correct them in some way, right? My dog, I'm like, ah, you know. I mean, it kills. It hurts me more than it hurts him, you know. But the let the lesson is very very important. It's the same with kids. It's the same with you. This is your lesson. Spirit doesn't want to punish you. But it's through this punishment, it's through this hard, hard thing that you realize who and what you really are. There's no other way. There's no other way to get there. This is the way. And there are some beautiful things in this place. Forgiveness is a huge part of this because we hold on to these things, right? We hold on. A lot of things that we are going for in life is revenge. Remember, and you're going to show them. I mean, that music teacher that told me I was never going to amount to anything in music, told me I should stick with football. Well, man, tell me that wasn't the driving force of my career for the longest time. It absolutely was, right? You got to let all that shit go. You got to let it go. People that anger you, you got to show them. I'm just going to achieve all these things and show them. You know, let all it go. Forgiveness. Because you got to put all of your energy, all of it, has to be about you. It has to be about healing you, fixing you, processing all of this stuff inside of you and getting it out. All of that negativity has to go. Refinement. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> this is a hard one, right? I know I must come off. I don't want to come off too mean, but I want to really drive home this point of how important this is. It's really, really, really important. 
And the sad part is, is that most of you guys are going to do all the other things. And this will be the last thing that you do because you're going to be afraid of it. I'm telling you from experience, don't be afraid of it. It's not going to kill you. It is going to be terrifying in many, many ways. But it's going to help make you a better, stronger, more loving person than you ever thought possible. So as you get to this space, it's all about protecting yourself, right? Protecting that emotion, protecting that, that vibration, right? And protection is not something you have to do very, very much in, on the spiritual um, journey, but, but it is going to come into play here because you're at a crossroads of ditching the old world to embrace a new world. So you're going to have to put up some boundaries, right? You have to exercise some of these aspects of the solar plexus to say here and no further. I quit. I'm done. And your toxicity cannot come past this line. I'm drawing a line right here. No more of that toxic stuff can come into my life because you're done. You're done. You're letting all that stuff go. This is the new you, the new purified you. Where we're canceling out all the karma. The only karma going out from here on out is going to be love. Right? That's a decision. That's being responsible. That's taking control of your life fully taking control of your life and letting go of all these egoistic ideals. What you're doing by quitting is kind of like becoming the puppet. You, you used to be the one and you used to think that you were the one animating the puppet, but your ego was the one animating the avatar of you. It's like a puppet, right? And quitting is like pulling the ego out of that puppet and just leaving the puppet right here and just waiting. You're waiting for spirit to become the new hand, the new hand to fill up that puppet. But it takes a minute. There's going to be a space there. There's going to be that, is it ever going to come? Am I ever going to be held? And you will, but not before it tortures you because there's a lesson here. So part of setting this boundary, right? You're going to evoke the archangel of, Mike, of Michael, right? Because all of these angels that we hear about are archetypes. They all have, they all have meaning. I, and I hope you guys have checked out the uh, podcast I did with Mark Serto because he went heavily into this. And uh, it's very, very important stuff. And we'll, we'll get into archetypes one night on a different show. But you evoke these archetypes. These are... These aren't, don't think of them as archangels out in the world. It's not necessarily that. They're archetypes of mind. They're aspects of you, of strength that you have to embody. And Michael is that strength. He is the one that puts the foot down and says, here and no further. Because the waters on this side are pure. And none of that toxic stuff can come in and, and, and pollute these waters. These waters are divine. And that's what you have to do. You quit, you let go, and your only job is getting your head right, getting your heart right, getting your sense of being right, getting your vibration right. If there's people in your life that are always bringing you down, they have to go. Ooh, that felt like a bad band-aid being pulled off, didn't it? They have to go. I'm sorry they have to go sometimes we're really polite and we don't want to do that then limit your then limit your engagement with them you're gonna you're gonna find that once you do this quitting your vibration is going to change so drastically that almost everybody in your life is going to fall away because the people who you attracted already into your life aren't going to be vibrating at your new vibration so it's just like turning the dial on the on the radio like you turn it you're no longer listening to this station and you're in a new station and in this new station which right now is just static but you're waiting for the signal to come in and the signal is going to be this new you but first you have to bring it to static and you're going to find all these people and all these situations are naturally just going to start to fall away and it's going to be terrifying because suddenly you're quitting is going to turn into a crumbling, a crumbling away of all these things that you thought were important. 
a crumbling away of your life. All of it. When I mean all of it, it's all going to burn away. But it's okay. You'll live. You'll eat. You'll eat. And when you get through it, you're going to be stronger than you ever thought you ever were. As the crumbling starts to happen in your life, there's going to be a knee-jerk reaction to try to fix it because you're going to you're going to be tempted. This is the temptation. This is the temptation of the adversary. You'll be tempted. It'll start to get really, really bad. And then you're going to be tempted. You're going to be presented with a situation where if you only bend the knee one more time, you could put an end to all of this. Just bend the knee. Just renounce what you were, what you were doing with your quitting and go back to your life and all will be forgiven. There will be that opportunity. That's your temptation. But you have to realize you're halfway there at this point. You're already halfway there. You're almost out of it. So stick with it and have faith. Have faith. This is a time of keeping your eyes open for new opportunity, new ideas, big dreams, dreams that you were always too conservative to think about, dreams that you were like, well, that's never going to be the thing that makes me happy, even though that's what I really want to do. I can't go for that because that's ludicrous, right? No, that's the thing you go after. That's the thing. And be completely open to how spirit enters and, and shapes this part of you. From the devastation of this burnt away reality, you are going to be the one that picks up the pieces. You'll be picking up the pieces of your life, trying to salvage what you can. But there's going to be and aliveness to things. When you get to that point of where you're starting to pull your life back together again, there's going to be an aliveness to life that you haven't known since you were a child. Things will just start to appear miraculous to you again. Miraculous. Food will taste better. People will just seem better. The the nature will seem more, more nature-like. It'll just be more vibrant and more amazing. Everything that you do love about life will just be enhanced because you're experiencing it through brand new eyes, brand new mind, brand new perception, free and clear of all that stuff that ego was trying to convince you you needed in order to be happy. break free for 21 days letting go of all the negative talking people they have to go anyone bringing you down just just start just start watching yourself you might be, this person might be your best friend right you get in there and you you realize man this is my best friend for years and years but every time i'm around this person my my whole vibe goes down i feel just worse and worse and worse and worse right Self-preservation. What's more important? Your friendship or you? Because you're drowning. Anybody who makes you feel like that is a drowning person. And the first thing they teach you if you're trying to be a lifeguard is that a drowning person could take a perfectly good swimmer down with them. What's the word they say? Misery loves company? It's totally true. Misery loves company. But instead of like looking at these things with um, with a crooked eye of, you know, us versus them kind of thing, just thank them for the lesson. That's the reason they're really there. 
They're there so that you can break free of them. That's their job. Their whole role in your life was to be this adversarial tool that you have to break free from. This whole life is like this. Test after test after test after test after test. How much faith do you have? And with each thing that you, each test you go through, your faith just gets more solid and more solid and more solid to unending, unending gnosis. Just reading these comments here, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys very, very much. A lot of very, very kind words in here. Are there any questions? You guys have anything you want me to talk about or open up more on? That's right, Highness. That's, you have to stop judging. That all of that is part of the surrender. You just you have to surrender from all of the things that you thought life was going to do to save you. That's right, Gigi. It is what it is. It is what it is. I control nothing. I quit. I quit. I control nothing. But it's important that you feel the relief in it. Re feel the relief in the quitting. That is what you're going after. The whole point of it is to grab a hold and become harmonic with that vibration, that feeling of, oh, man, I'm done. I'm done. Thank God I'm done. We're all very proud of you. You gave it a solid go. It's okay. It's perfectly okay to quit. Perfectly okay. Oh yes, please. If you, again, if you guys have questions, just put it in all uh, capitals so I know to see it. So hold on a second. The robot says, "I know this stuff is off topic, but could someone tell me the records or albums in the back?" Huh? Oh, um, I was a musician. I am a musician, uh, record producer uh, for over 30 years in the music business, and I did a lot of work with all these artists and earned these cool records, and it was a great life. And now I have an awesome channel besides this channel. This is my side hustle channel. My main channel is called Phi Tribe, P-H-I-T-R-I-B-E. -I -I -E. That is where all of my music is. And um, that channel has over 215,000 subscribers now. We have over almost 50 million views. And uh, it's completely blowing up. It's awesome. So if you want my music, go over there and check me out. A lot of what I do now is spiritual healing music and sleep music and all kinds of ways to heal and repair the body and mind. And it really works. There's a lot to it. Everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. So if you can become harmonic with the music that I'm making, such as the music that you're hearing right now in the background, these frequencies will bring you to these states of being. And um, it's not woo-woo stuff. There's a lot of credible science that, that supports all of this stuff. And if you don't want to read all the science papers that I have, uh, read the comments because you're going to find that there are hundreds of thousands of people leaving comments about how it's changed their life. So for that, I love you guys very much, and I thank you for that. Reading those comments are like the highlight of my day. It's, it, it, I was just to say, it is the highlight of my day, but it's so many comments now, I can't even do it by myself anymore. I have to have... Um, my dear co uh, colleagues here at Phi Tribe, uh, help me read them all because there's just so many. So that part is amazing. But thanks for asking uh, the robot. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Highness, you missed the lives on Phi Tribe. Well, guess what? I've got an announcement that I'll make to you right now. We are coming up with another channel for Phi Tribe. It's a secondary channel. It's going to be called Phi Tribe. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it's going to be called because we haven't got it all set yet, but 
it's very very cool and the secondary channel is uh coming out uh very 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 soon and we will be doing live shows on there uh, with the three of us and uh, we'll be getting very very heavily into all that spooky vibration stuff because that's what people really want to hear about so um, yes look forward to that and I hope to get, see you guys over there hello Joyce <laughs> awesome are there any more questions if you do just drop it in capital letters for me and uh, I'll read it out loud Let's see, we're like 45 minutes in, which is not bad. Awesome. This might be a cool place to talk about Honopono for forgiveness. I've, I've, ta I've mentioned it on other episodes, but I'll mention it again here. Forgiveness is a huge part of this. It's a huge part because as your world crumbles away, um, it's important that you don't hold any kind of animosity or resentment towards it. It's very, very, very important. Remember, remember, your vibration is everything, right? So as all this stuff is falling away, you can't be angry. You can't be sad. You can feel nothing but bliss. And this is a mindful act. You have to do this yourself, right? Because your, your, your habitual state is to be devastated by this and out of habit you'll go to places that are very dark right this is why you got to be ready to do this you know and you have to take control of this with your mind you have to make you have to make this your number one job watching your mind and and feelings and body and you say well i'm not i don't control my feelings i just feel no no Yes, you feel, but you can change that like that by just focusing on it. I don't care how bad it is. How ba no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how bad it is. You can turn that frown upside down with your focus. With your focus. I'm not trivializing the suffering. I know it's hard sometimes. I know. I Believe me, I know how bad it can be. I really do. I really, really do. But if you can get through this, if you can just maintain focus of the mind through this for 21 days, just 21 days, you can do it. You'll start to break those habits of where your mind goes. And you can train the mind to focus on the things that you're grateful for, the things that you love, the people that you love, the things in life that bring you joy and happiness, really real joy and happiness not perceive joy and happiness in the future but the things that bring you joy and happiness right now the more that you can integrate those things into your life the more that you can create that vibration of being in your life then the world has no choice but to reflect that back to you because it's just a giant mirror the whole thing is a giant mirror we don't see anything else out there. We only see a reflection of who we have become. We never ever see other. We only see a reflection of who we have become. Wonder Soul Sealer, uh, Healer says, let's see, I didn't see your question. Oh, here it is, sorry. Is your show weekly, every other week, or just whenever the spirit moves you? It's kind of whenever the spirit moves me. I've been trying to do it every week. I typically want to do it on Sunday nights. It seems to be the best night to get everyone here. Um, but uh, two weeks ago, I broke my toe while I was setting up for the show. So that show didn't happen. And then this weekend was my birthday. And then I kind of overdid it for my birthday and kind of got a little sick. Kind of got like a 24-hour bug. And I was kind of on the couch, just kind of feeling like poo for a couple of days. So you can kind of probably still hear it in my voice. And uh, which is why I didn't do it, which is why I'm here on Thursday instead. So I'm still trying to make it up to you. But typically Sunday night is what I'm going for. Sunday night at 11 seems to work because I have a lot of West Coast people. So I want to make it fair for everybody. And um, yeah, so there. I hope you guys will check me out every Sunday doing this. And if you guys think a better night will work, let me know. Let me know in the chat. 
And please also, um, you know, the hardest thing is coming up with things to talk about on here. I, it would be very, very helpful if you guys drop comments and ask questions or, or just see, give me a, give me a topic to talk about, you know, that even that is a huge help. Thank you, Susie Q. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Yes, 54, 54. It's a nine year for me, so I'm very, very excited that it's a nine year. And so far, the universe is showing me that it's a nine year because it has just been blessing after blessing after blessing. So I'm very, very excited. It's a nice change of pace for me. <laughs> yes, Highness, feel it, observe it, let it go, right? Only love. Thank you, Gigi. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more cool questions in here? You guys are you guys are so smart. You guys don't really have to have too many questions, do you? You guys are awesome. We got boy, man, what a enormous, awesome crowd in here. Thank you very much. Well, this was kind of a short one. It was a dark one, wasn't it? It was a dark one. When you find yourself in that place and everything is crumbled around you. there's going to be a peace there. And in that moment, you're going to know it was all worth it. Thank you very much, Enki. I'm trying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Another trip around the sun. I made it. Woohoo! <laughs> Flat Earthers Rocket here. I can already see the comments. They're going to be like, you didn't go around anything. <laughs> You're totally right. I didn't. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm going to kind of end it here because I don't really have any more notes. And uh, incidentally, when I do these shows, you know, sometimes I, I, I go back and I watch them again. I'm like, oh, man, I got that author's name wrong or I got that section wrong. It's going to happen sometimes because a lot of times my notes are like two lines. You know, this one says... Uh, it's, it's, it's like literally like five lines of things. So um, I wing these. I just kind of go, okay, that's the topic. And I just come in here and I start talking. And, um, you know, I can't remember every little detail. But if I do miss something, I'll do everything I can to make a correction for it in the comments. And I'll pin it to the top. Well, thank you guys very, very much for showing up. I really, really, really appreciate you. I'm going to rest my voice. I can already hear it kind of sneaking back to me a little bit and I will be here again on Sunday all right with a brand new episode and I look forward to seeing you all then all right thank you very much love and blessings to everybody have a good night